Okay, here we are back in the world of Piaget, Cognitive Development, and we are going to look at some of the basics of his ideas. First of all, he said, children are like scientists. They naturally test things and try things and experiment. This builds up knowledge by interacting with the world around them. They're not simply empty vessels to be filled up. <clears throat> Humans are born as active information processors. We naturally want to make sense of the environment. Learning happens naturally. <clears throat> and what does that tell us? The way we teach our curriculum should be built around children's natural curiosity and ways of thinking. Can you say Montessori school? For children, <clears throat> playing around is a very important part of cognitive development. They play, they poke things, they test things, they act on their environment. This is an important part of their cognitive development. Cognitive development also is dependent on their physical actions on the environment. For example, crawling around allows them to see the world in three dimensions, splashing with a boat in the water. These physical actions on the environment helps develop cognitive, their cognitive, their, their thinking. So, the children's view of the world is based on their experience. However, children's cognitive structures dictate what they notice and how it's interpreted. So, it goes, it's a two-way street. They act upon the world, they develop cognitive structures, but their cognitive structures also helps them make sense of what they see in the world, if that makes any sense. Humans naturally strive to adapt to their environment, make sense of the environment. They use the knowledge in their heads to make sense and adapt to the environment. Now, this knowledge is called schema. It's a file cabinet in our head, an organized body of knowledge related to a subject. The plural of schema is schematic. All right. So as the number of files grow in our head, the number of schema or schemata, cognitive structures changes. So think of our brain as a file cabinet and every time we learn something new we create a new manila file folder. Cognitive structure, file folder in our head. Schema, if we need to make sense of something, for example, if I encounter a frog, automatically the frog schema, I open that up and go, oh, here's a frog, okay, that makes sense. Yes, it does. We use what's in our head to make sense of the world, if that makes any sense to you at all. Learning is constructing new schemata or expanding and elaborating old schemata. As knowledge develops in particular areas, these schemes, schemata, become more coordinated and more complex. Piaget thought that intelligence was a dynamic trait, not stable. Intelligence are those acts that enable in an organism, enable an organism to deal with its environment for survival. All right. So in humans, it's cognitive acts that enable people to deal with social, academic, interpersonal, and professional environments. It is dynamic. It changes. It is not stagnant. A couple of other basic Piagetan concepts, and I love that word, Piagetan. Organization is a natural ongoing process. We use the files in the file cabinet in our head to make new sense of new information. As we learn, our schemata become more organized and complex, and in turn, our thinking becomes more sophisticated. Now, adaptation is when humans adapt to the environment using assimilation and accommodation, and I'm going to define these two in just a minute. Assimilation is when we encounter new information that corresponds with our current thinking, our current schemata. For example, Bobby learns something about frogs, and that, that meshes, that goes in, 
that is consistent with his frog file in his head. So he simply adds more knowledge to that file. He assimilates this new knowledge. Accommodation is when new information either doesn't fit the schemata or there isn't a schemata related to the new information. For example, Bobby learns that animals today look much different than they did millions of years ago. He encounters the theory of evolution for the first time. This conflicts with his current thinking and his current state and creates cognitive dissonance or disequilibrium. Accommodation would occur by creating new schemata or incorporating this new information. That is accommodation. When you have to either create a new file or completely rearrange the old file. Equilibration is the motivating force behind all learning. I am motivated. It's the constant striving for balance between new information. We get curious. Oh, I want to know about that. I want to know about that. And we're out of balance. We find out and oh, okay. Equilibration again. All right. Novelty creates disequilibrium. I want to find out. That's new. That's interesting. That's exciting. You get the information and ah, oh, okay. I'm back to equilibration again. So novelty of new information wears off. We create new interests and look for new phenomena to investigate and the cycle of learning and life continues. According to Piaget, changes in thinking occur internally. That is, as we grow and mature, our brain changes and causes us to think differently at each stage. However, having experiences enhances this, this development as well. Think about this. Suddenly, I saw things differently. Can you think of a time or experience when you saw things totally different? When you had to accommodate. Think of a time when you have encountered new information or had new experiences that created a state of disequilibrium. This would be a time when new information conflicted with what you previously held to be true. How did you resolve that? Disequilibrium, accommodation. These are two very important concepts. Equilibrium happens through accommodation or assimilation. Equilibrium. Equilibrium. The motivating force, the need to establish equilibrium, is the motivating force behind all learning. And cognitive development, Piaget, the basics.